Deleting your information off the internet is a pretty big project, and when I did part one, I knew I would have more to talk about. So this is part two of how to delete yourself off the internet to make it harder for data brokers, companies, and random people to find you online. Now, if you haven't watched part one already, TLDR, I explain the following. Using a different search engine, deleting Google search data, removing faulty or personally identifiable search results about you, using Delete Me to get your data off data brokers sites, using Have I Been Pwned to find data breaches, finding and deleting old accounts, removing or deleting old connected third-party apps on your social media, using a private mailbox, switching to a more privacy conscious email provider and switching to a more secure browser. Needless to say, it was a lot, but can you believe that there is still more to talk about on this subject? Yes, my dudes, this is spring cleaning online and deleting yourself off the internet part two. Now, if you don't wanna throw away your phone and live in a forest with no internet, uh, trust me, if it was up to me, I would absolutely go full outlander and do it. We do need to make some sacrifices to keep connections or for convenience sake. So I take an understanding approach to security and privacy by saying in today's connected world, I am not going to harp on anyone for keeping your social media alive. I still have a Facebook account. It's the only thing that some of my family uses to keep in touch with each other. And if I can keep in touch with them easily, then I will. But if you do have accounts that you either A, cannot delete because there's no way to delete them, or B, you want to keep an account for connection's sake, like my Facebook, then you can minimize the data that is stored in those accounts. Now, I recently found out for example, that David's bridal does not let you delete an account. I'm not a bride anymore. I got married many years ago and I'm not a bridesmaid. Most of my friends are also already married. I have no use for that account anymore. So I had to go in and basically change all of the data. I corrupted it, so to speak. So they have a fake phone number, a fake address. They even have a fake name associated with my account now. GDPR and CCPA may take issue with websites not allowing customers to delete their accounts, so hopefully websites will make deletion more easily accessible in the future. Sometimes they expect you to put in an inquiry to customer service or call them, oh, which is a very shady way to keep a customer account alive, in my personal opinion. You can also change your birth date, your name, etc., on social media as well. Using fake or alias data online is totally legal. And even though websites often want you to add a birthday or your full first and last name, you actually don't have to put real information in there on most occasions, especially if you are looking for ways to minimize potential risk. Now, I have mentioned it before, but I will do it again. Data brokers may be storing data about you too, and I have partnered with Delete Me for this episode. Data brokers collect information about you, be it your address, phone number, your date of birth, your previous addresses, tons of information, and they make this data publicly available and easy to find by adding it to their search databases. Even if you move or change your telephone number, your old data could still be found online. If somebody knows your old number, they could run it through a data broker site to get more information about you. Your old phone number could be used to impersonate you in open accounts. Your old email address could be leaked in a data breach on some website and bad actors can run that through data broker databases to match it to you. If you forget to change your old email address or your phone number on an old profile or a website, somebody could use that data to reset passwords, receive two-factor authentication codes, or or brute force your online accounts. This is creepy and it should not happen, but it does. So I use Delete Me to add some privacy to my online life. Delete Me queries data broker sites to find matches to your data and they send opt-out requests to those sites. They continuously look for your information too, just in case those data brokers republish your data in the future. I have used Delete Me for over five years now and for good reason. They do what they promise and they they save me tons of time. I have an exclusive coupon code now just for my viewers. You can use the code SNUBS at checkout. That's S-N-U-B-S 
for 20% off any of the consumer plans. That's snubs for 20% off and see how Delete Me can help you take your online privacy to the next level. Click the link below or hit joindeleteme.com slash morse code to sign up today. And a huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. We love Delete Me, they're amazing. Now you may have already gone through a lot of my previous tips about deleting yourself from the internet, but find information that still pops up. Well, how does that happen? Much of it could stem from advertiser tracking or cookies or from the data that mobile applications can track about you. In a recent video on my channel, I explain how session cookies work, but another type of tracker are the ones used for advertising by third parties. These allow advertisers and marketers to track your data across multiple websites. So they can form a profile of information about your habits, your likes, and your dislikes. It even gets more in depth though, as these cookies can track your demographical information, your behavioral information, conversion rates, how often do you click on things, and your browser info as well. So even if you have created fake profiles on your top websites, if you see an ad for something on one website and you show interest by clicking on it or searching for the brand name, you may start seeing that ad or similar products all over the place everywhere you go on the internet. So you may want to block these entirely. Now browsers do give you the option to clear cookie data and change cookie settings by allowing them or blocking them entirely or on a site-by-site -site basis. You can also make it so a browser deletes all cookies after you close the browser. I walked through this on my cookie video. Taking this approach can be really good for privacy but also security. So even though Google will eventually be deprecating third-party cookies in Chrome, they keep delaying that rollout so as of now it's still a really good tip to use ad blocking extensions or a privacy-centric browser to automate the process of privacy. I did a roundup of my favorite extensions for privacy in Chrome late last year, and I still recommend those extensions for most people. I'm also doing a review of my favorite, most secure and private browsers as well, so keep an eye out for that video if it has not been posted yet. Now, since many of us out here use iOS or Android, how do you control what data you are sharing with apps? When you download apps, you may just approve all permissions that they ask for, or you can always go back into those apps and turn off those permissions. You can read up on their data handling policies, or you can straight up just install them entirely if you don't use them. On Android, you can hold down on an app from the home screen or from the app drawer, and you can choose app info or click on the little eye for info if you just see an eye. This can take you to the settings for each and every app where you can turn off notifications, you can uninstall applications, you can clear their storage or cache, but also you can check and remove permissions. Now this setting lists all the permissions that an app has. Some of them make sense, like Instagram has access to the camera while using the app, which makes sense if you're posting images on Instagram, which is an image sharing service, but some don't really need that to be enabled. You could also check your app's data policies in the app store. So to do this, scroll down on the settings page and click app details, which will take you over to the Google App Play Store. Right above the reviews in the data safety section, this is what you want to look for. Now click into the section to read up on how apps share data with other third parties if they do, and do they sell or share and why? All of this now has to be disclosed by each and every app in the store, or it runs the risk of being kicked out. If you see any applications that you don't want sharing data, you can always uninstall them or just check their site from a browser instead of downloading the app application on your phone. Now, as a pro tip to wrap up this episode, I wanted to mention store rewards or loyalty memberships and programs. Retailers entice customers into being loyal shoppers by offering these programs that usually come with rewards or discounts or freebies. But in exchange for those discounts, they collect store and sell data about your shopping habits and who you are. Everyone loves a discount, but if your favorite retailer suffers some kind of data breach, all that information they have been collecting about you could then be available for anyone to see. Plus, they could be selling this data to other third parties, again. Now, years ago, I set up a loyalty reward card with this retailer in a mall, and I started getting magazines for similar clothing from brands that I had never heard of 
at my home address. That was the first time I had noticed that companies sell your data and they give it to other marketers in the hopes that you will purchase things from them and be a consumer. It's really gross. It's really, really gross. One way to circumvent these loyalty systems, but still get deals is to shop at your favorite retailers whenever they are doing sales and deals around the store, especially during the holidays. You'll see President's Day steals and deals all the time at all sorts of different retailers. Uh, you can also shop using cash as opposed to credit cards to keep purchases more anonymous so they're not tracked via which credit card you use. Online, you can use prepaid visas or gift cards, and you can check out as a guest instead of signing up for a service. You can also use an email address you don't use anywhere else or use one that is generated or anonymous to make it even more anonymous about who you are and where you're purchasing from. Or, you know, we could all just run off to a forest and live like Claire and Jamie in the 1700s from Outlander. Maybe that's why I like Renfair so much because there's no data issues. You just go there and you dress up and you act like a fairy in a forest and you drink mead. It's fun. Can you tell I miss the Renaissance Festival here in Colorado? I can't wait until the summertime. So excited to go back. If you've got tips for data privacy online, leave them down below in the comments. There are lots of other ways that you can delete yourself off the internet. These are definitely not the only ones. Check out the first video I did on this subject over here or click this video that YouTube thinks that you will enjoy. Bye y'all.